Hello everyone, I am Seng Jun Cho, Director of the Application Technology Center at Park Systems. Thanks and congratulations on organizers for this interesting symposium, even in this COVID-19 situation. I am honored to introduce the recent optical hybrid SPM technology development at Park Systems as an opening talk. During the talk, I will introduce several prototypes and alpha and beta hybrid equipment which are still under development. Why hybrid metallurgy is so important? In the preface of the book, Nanotechnologies, Zhang Marie Lang, who received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1987, told Beyond Dimension Syringage, the new era of complexity is initiated and it becomes true in every aspect of science and engineering. Therefore, different metallurgy techniques are required for developing nanotechnology, which are the unison of physics, chemistry, biology, and industrial sciences, which mirror to the atom or molecular scale by Yuan Fuxiao. These problems in nanotechnology can be solved by using multiple tools in unison to add their respective strength to overcome individual limitations. So, Hand Mark Alexander also said, hybrid metallurgy has gained significant recognition in recent times as an approach to considerably reduce parametric uncertainties by combining different measurements of the same measurement. This kind of scientific challenge used to be academic academically met first, then adopted by industry later. But recent rapid development of industries has forced us to develop metallurgical solutions. Good example is semiconductor industry. The semiconductor industry is increasingly in dire need of hybrid metallurgy to meet that need in development and manufacturing. However, in order to maximize the gain from hybrid metallurgy, there are several homeworks. This is one example. For every added measurement technique, it is crucial to perform a careful error analysis in order to use its full capabilities. Park Solutions has been successfully implemented in semiconductor industry. Park has won more than 160 cases of automated AFM since 2015. As a matter of course, we were selected one of the most promising 20 semiconductor technology solution providers in 2018. In addition, we were selected again for one of the top 10 advanced materials solution providers last year. As credibility increases, the industry requires PARC to develop advanced hybrid instrument solutions. I won the national grant of a Nano Convergence 2020 titled Development of a High Spatial Resolution SPM System and Nano Optical Module in 2018. Under this grant, we are currently developing automated AFM and WRI wide light interferometry hybrid industrial equipment and optical hybrid research AFM as well. We are finishing AFM WRI hybrid alpha equipment in this December and starting to join evaluation program with one of the major semiconductor companies. In WRI, the height of sample surface at each pixel can be calculated from the light intensity variation due to interference while scanning the height of a mirror objective lens. Since WRI could generate 3D images with the height information, it is also called optical profiler. AFM technology has a measurement area of up to 100 micrometer and is suitable for high resolution and high accuracy image measurement, but not suitable for full die range measurement, which is frequently requested from the industry. In other hand, WRI technology is suitable for measuring a full die with areas of hundreds of micrometer to a few millimeter, but would produce low resolution and low accuracy data compared to the AFM. 
Therefore, we think that these two technologies would complement each other very well. So WLI module integrated with the NX Wafer 300mm system, which is Park's bestseller in semiconductor industry. NX Wafer has very solid platform with less than 0.05 nanometer noise floor, and WLI module also equipped with a closed loop G scanner with low noise detector used in AFM to guarantee the best performance of WLI. In addition to conventional WLI mode, PSI, phase shift interferometer mode for high resolution imaging was also equipped. These are repeatability comparison between WRI and PSI mode. PSI mode showed enhanced repeatability with a different processing algorithm, especially in the low high sample with the nanometer range. Usually PSI mode needs less frame to capture than WRI mode and save the time in averaging captured data at each position. These enhanced results were mainly originated from closed loop scanner but stability of NX wafer 300mm system also affected. WRI has a strength in measuring higher sample height from few hundred uh, nanometer to micrometer range. These are WRI image of a standard sample and hard disk drive. This is the example of WRI and AFA imaging process in sequence. From optical view, WRI is able to provide large 3D view of the sample, which is 100 micrometer by 1250 micrometer. Then AFM zooms in to locate very small target objects such as a hole tip recession, which reads and writes in hard disk drive. Changing lens in WRI from 10x to 50x using motorized turret gives us higher resolution images quickly. In reason of interest, we change the lens to 50x using motorized turret. In this result, 10 nanometer step high sample with a feature size around 1 micrometer was successfully measured. In conclusion, metrology capability was approved by aforementioned result. And remaining work is application function testing like aura stitching and defect reviewing, and these are right now testing. This is another very attractive applications of AFM and WRI hybrid system in various industry. This hybrid setup can be used in defect hotspot detection and review. Hotspots of a pattern structure can be detected by comparing images of reference and target sample areas. High-speed hotspot detection by WRI enables fast localization of a defect site for high-resolution AFM review. Developing software for automated review of hotspot defects by WRI and AFM is one of our big homework. WRI can also be used monitoring CMP process in large area. As I emphasized before, WRI on the solid platform with an ultra-low noise floor give us few nanometer resolution in z-axis of WRI images. So this is a before CMP and after CMP. You can see this difference clearly. With the stitching process, WRI enable us to image a full dye 3D mapping. This WRI image produced by stitching 25 images to show 20 by 21 millimeter full dye map. However, minimizing errors in stitching is not so easy. Therefore, we have been working on to develop automated stitching process and calibrating WRI data with AFM data. This is essential process required for full dye or reticle mapping. A dye in the context of an integrated circuit, is a small block of semiconducting material on which a given functional circuit is fabricated. A reticle, on the other hand, refers to a single layer of pattern that covers a small portion of the wafer. 
reticle usually contains series of dyes. These are basic process of stitching. In preparation, define run linearity and field curvature errors in addition to vision calibration. After correcting non-linearity and field coverage errors, we need to align X, Y, and Z as a whole image. Then, using advanced flattening process to minimize the errors. We created pseudo surface and segmented them and stitched again to evaluate stitching algorithm. For simulation, we create several types of pseudo surface with the variables of without noise and with noise, the presence of scribe lines, Z offset, and tilting. It is easier to understand to see following figures. These images are without and with noise segmented 9 by 11, which means this image is constructed by 99 images stitched. Pseudo surface number three include the scribe lines and number four include the random Z offset without tilting and number five image has a random Z offset with tilting. These are results of a stitching algorithm. At this time, all images include scribe line. Without noise, of course, there is no, no errors. Just including noise, there is no error was produced as well in stitching. When there is a random G offset of hundreds of nanometer, which produces negligible errors of less than one femtometer. If you include random tilting errors without angle alignment, then error becomes as large as tens of nanometer which is not acceptable. However, with angle alignment, the error will reduce again to less than 0.1 nanometer. So which means our stitching algorithm is working fine. So this is actual stitching test with a real VLSI step high standard of 180 nanometer. This is a data image in April and six months ago before optimizing the stitching algorithm. And now you can see the stitching algorithm has improved a lot. Under the same research grant, our participating partner in Incheon University has been constructing prototype of optical hybrid research AFM. This system is capable of most FPM techniques and visual spectroscopy, Raman, photoluminescence, and etc. These are preliminary data of Raman and photoluminescence image of molybdenum disulfide. These images show normal Raman resolution of around 300 nanometer, by the way, which is excellent number. It also have capability of a visual spectroscopy. So these are different structure of gratings, and these different gratings can be distinguished by visual spectroscopy. And this data is measuring IR-induced thermal signal on IR plasmonic nanostructure. Since it is built on existing NX12, the AFM head is exchangeable with the SICM head for live single cell imaging. These images are impossible to obtain from AFM head. In addition to SICM, we are currently developing pipette based scanning electrochemical microscopy. SICM can help us to get the topographical information of sample surface using ion current signal between pipette end and the sample surface, but we cannot get the electrochemical information, but adding ultra-microelectrode as a scanning probe and potential stat to the SICM, then it transforms to a pipette-based SECM. In conventional SECM, it is a bit difficult to control the pipette sample distance, thus reducing the reliability of the data. 
in order to complement shortcomings and combine strengths of these two techniques, SICM and SECM has been introduced. There are two channels. One is to detect the ion current for topography, and the other is to detect ferrodite current for EC response. The strong point of this technique is a simultaneous measurement of both topography and electrochemical property. But it is also a bit difficult to characterize the probe and its setup and operation. There is a different technique called the scanning electrochemical cell microscopy. It is also a pipette-based SPM technique designed to allow simultaneous conductance and electrochemical visualization of surface and interfaces. Compared to the other pipette-based techniques, it is quite simple, easy, and fast setup and operation. It enables the localized EC signal analysis with a nanometer scale. In addition, these two techniques are only operable in liquid condition, but FHCCM is working in the ambient condition. I have won uh, another grant in research equipment development and advanced project titled Photo Induced AFM Development for Molecular Composition Analysis. The development of the industrial automated version is due until the end of next year. Photo induced force microscopy, PIFM, can obtain chemical specific nanoscale images and IR spectra. The incident mid-IR laser is electrically triggered to pulse at force modulation. F0 and F1 are the first and second resonance frequency of the cantilever. The topography of the sample is measured at uh, the uh, F1, and the photo-induced dipole-dipole interaction force is measured at F0. We have established an alpha system that can measure 300 mm wafer samples. With the global attention on the role that plastics play in our ecosystem, many researchers are investigating new bioplastic or biodegradable polymer, alternatives to reduce the ecological impact of plastic packaging. One such promising thermoplastic is polyacrylic lactic acid, PLA. This bioplastic decomposes into lactic acid. PLA is widely applicable, cost-efficient to produce, and degrade naturally in the environment under certain conditions. For this reason, PLA is found in many consumer products, such as medical implants, 3D printing, and disposable and combustible cups and tear plates. There are some disadvantages in the material properties of a PLA. One of the possible candidates for improvement is the nanocomposition of PLA with an alkyl acrylate copolymer, ACM. The sample has been studied using PIFM to determine how the material are dispersed. Using the excellent correlation between PIFM and the FTIR spectra, we are able to confidently show where the two materials are located within the material matrix with a nanometer spatial resolution. This is PIFM. Uh, image of a silicon germanium silicon oxide fin fat structure. You can clearly distinguish two different materials, silicon germanium and silicon oxide using PIFM. Same structure was imaged using TURS and published in 2015. By comparing PIFM images with the TURS images, it makes it easy to see which is better. Hybrid metallurgy related activity can also be seen in the standardization activity. There are ISO standard for data transfer format for SPM and development of a standard for AFM data format for hybrid metallurgy in TC201 SC3 Data Management and Treatment Committee. In conclusion, technological development for hybrid metallurgy is active and important. AFM and WRI hybrid equipment optical hybrid research AFM, and photo-induced force microscope, and the standardization activity were introduced. I believe the prototype of optical hybrid research AFM is one of kind, an ultimate research tool for 2D material research, and much more. 
Thank you for your attention.